I didn't have any particular interest in testing out an old CCD censored camera again. By today's standards, most of the CCD sensor cameras are old and crappy now. Just like my underwear. But as the wise men from Journey once proclaimed, some will win, some will lose, and some were born to sing the blues. Well, the Samsung EX1 certainly won here as it managed to wrangle its way from my heart and straight onto this barely operational YouTube channel. The Samsung EX1 has a 1 and 1.7 inch 10 megapixel CCD sensor with a 24 to 72 millimeter equivalent lens that is 1.8 at the wide end and drops to only f 2.4 at the long end. The 24 to 72 mil is a very practical range for most photography and it's great that the wide end is 24 millimeters as opposed to the typical 28. Doesn't sound like much, but there is a huge difference in that extra four millimeters. And if you don't believe me, just ask your mum. The glasses from the German manufacturer Schneider Koischnack who are probably the most famous for their work with Hasselblad. This lens is decently sharp, even wide open, and the flare and fringing is reasonably well controlled, as we can see in this image where I shot directly into the sun. An image that would have had a lot of cameras struggling, especially the old point and shoots. Really impressed with the performance here. Another useful feature is the optical image stabilisation, which you don't necessarily expect to see in a small CCD camera like this. So you can better get away with slightly slower shutter speeds on this camera. On top of the EX1 we see a pop-up flash which I'll never use, a PASM dial and a drive mode dial which I always appreciate seeing a physical control for. One feature I don't appreciate is the electronic power zoom. I'd much rather grab the collar and extend the barrel of the lens manually. It reminds me of what my penis used to be able to do. Plus it's more tactile, reliable and faster than waiting for the camera to boot up and respond to my inputs. I like that you can control the settings on the camera without diving into menus as well. For instance, during shutter priority mode, you control the speed with this clickable front dial. Although, confusingly, during aperture priority mode, instead you use this back spinning dial. This is probably for consistency during the full manual mode, but I'm easily confused. Plus all the substance abuse has ruined my short-term memory. I love that there's a metering mode button too. It's incredible how many cameras don't include these when it's such an important part of getting your exposure correct in camera. Although I'm sure if you all change your rolls entirely in Photoshop anyway, then it won't matter to you as much as it matters to me. This is the auto exposure, or automatic, everything's been done automatically on the camera. And the exposure tends to uh, lean towards being quite bright, even when you've got like spot metering on and stuff like that. So oftentimes it's just easier to take manual control. And as I've already mentioned and say about pretty much every camera, I don't like having to dive into menus, so the function button giving you access to the important stuff is a must include for me. A potentially controversial choice with the camera's design is that it includes the fully flip out articulating screen. This is a preference for me on most cameras as it's useful for making the best YouTube videos you've ever seen. Although the video recording is actually completely useless on this camera, as it only shoots in 480. Not even high definition 720p. So maybe you'll find the flip out screen pointless, and I suppose it could have been a tilting screen and been just as usable for photographers. There's no viewfinder of any kind on this camera either, which was common on these compact cameras back in the day. I use a viewfinder 99% of the time when I shoot, so the exclusion of one of those isn't a trend I enjoy. Just like those stupid handbags that you see teenage lads wearing now. Seriously? Handbags? You would have had the crap kicked out of you for wearing one of those when I was younger. They should be doing more manly stuff that we did as kids, like getting your hair styled the same as David Beckham. The AMOLED screen is fine. It's tiny, so you don't really benefit from the fact that it's AMOLED. Although I never struggled to see it out in the day or from different viewing angles, which could be a testament to the AMOLED technology itself but we're spoiled by incredible screens on our phones now, so this only looks okay by comparison. I'd still rather just have a viewfinder. The Samsung EX1 is one of those few and far between CCD cameras that has many features of a pro level camera, like manual dials, an exposure lock button, expertly produced glass, and also the ability to shoot raw files. If you've seen my stuff before, then why'd you come back? Seriously, what's wrong with you? Also, you'll have heard me babble on about how I like to get my images correct in camera, typically with my Fuji X-T4. Because playing around with shots in Lightroom just isn't for me. 
You can change up the colour channels here, but I'm spoiled by Fuji's options and this just won't cut it for getting the image right in the camera. So I had to try out the JPEG profiles on the EX1 and they're pretty useless. The retro profile is decent looking, but it gives you zero dynamic range. When I first started using this camera, looking at the screen while shooting had me really disheartened with how the shots looked. Which I'm used to whenever I take photographs, but I kept shooting anyway. Because contrary to popular belief, I'm an optimist and always look on the bright side of life. I had little to no hope for the RAWs because of the small and old sensor, but I was really pleasantly surprised to find that the RAWs are actually very, very capable on this camera. This had me do a complete 180 on how I feel about the Samsung EX1. The fact that I can get great looking shots in difficult high contrast situations with such an old lesser known camera should be great news for those collectors of these CCD sensors. I thought these images were going to be a bust and using this camera would be a complete waste of time, but being able to rescue the shots with the RAW files made a world of difference. Let me show you what a difference editing the RAW files makes to the final results. As you can see the photo was exposed for the shadows, as you typically will with digital photographs, and that completely blows out the highlights of course. But the dynamic range is surprisingly very good, and the RAWs do actually contain sufficient data to pull down the highlights. If you mess around with dehaze and clarity sliders, then it can make a hell of a difference with those blown out highlights. Here's the pre-edit, and now the edited shot. Another example, but with the opposite issue, I've exposed for the highlights and the midtones, and seemingly lost a lot of data in the shadows. The image on the back of the camera shows you the JPEG and looks completely unusable. The shadows were pretty much pitch black. Really wasn't feeling using this camera because I could already tell that the photos looked bad. But I was really happy with how well I could rescue this image by pulling some details out of the shadows. Not a capability I necessarily expect from an old camera with a small CCD sensor, but it performs very impressively in this aspect and had me totally change my tune. Just like when I start answering back and Helen glares at me. Another example of the Lightroom RAW edit rescuing an image. Although I could take a photo of an actual turd and an X-Pan crop would make it look good. This is your random X-Pan shot of the video. Newbies expect these in most of my videos. X-Pan is life. It shoots macro too like all these old digicams did. Nothing more to say on that really as I don't actually try to make any macro shots with it. And speaking of close up, it's a small sensor so you can't expect much bokeh and subject separation. Even shot close. Zoomed all the way in and shot wide open at 2.4. This is the best bokeh you can ask for. The Samsung EX1 isn't going to be your new portraiture camera. Although it'll probably be too small to impress that model you keep inappropriately flirting with anyway. The camera's small too. As much as I ended up enjoying this camera, it's not without flaws. The autofocus sometimes randomly decides to just not work. No matter how many times you try and force it to work. This is where aperture priority came in handy as I could close down to something like f5.6 and take the shot. Even though the camera showed it wasn't grabbing focus, the aperture was small enough to give us that long depth of field. Not ideal, but a useful workaround. Also the batteries are tiny so can't really be expected to hold that much juice. One battery with moderate use lasted me most of the day though. All in all, if it wasn't for those impressive RAW files, I wouldn't be singing the praises of the Samsung EX1. But I was really impressed by how much detail you can pull out of them in Lightroom, and it really saves the camera from obscurity. If you're working on a budget, or you just collect these CCD cameras, then the Samsung EX1 does come highly recommended. But you don't have to buy it if you don't want to. It's a free country. Just like I don't have to finish with something funny in every single video.